there's this theory going around that maybe it's not so much that the that Israel is controlling the United States, but actually the United States uses Israel as a way to project dominance in the Middle East and just to kill Arabs, because that's basically our idea of, I don't know, creating a free world, defending Western civilization. Um, right. To me, that, that theory seems to be ridiculous, but I know some smart people like Dr. Gilbert, or Dr. Rowe to believe that. And, and I think, you know, maybe we should try to see it from their point of view and see if there's any credence so I don't try to get too one-sided on my thoughts or opinions, just because when I follow Netanyahu and Israel in the past, year since I've really been following it closely, I'm just like, it's to me, it's clear Israel's calling the shots, but maybe there's another way to look at it. So yeah, right. um, tell me what right. you think. Well, the, yeah, this, this theory has been around for a long time. I think it's been probably around as long as Israel has been around. Um, I remember like when I first became aware of the, Palest uh, you know, the Palestinian um, injustice um, was back in the, the early 1990s. Um, you know, one of the people, an advocate um, of uh, Palestinians and a critic of Zionism, um, it was the the famous linguist Noam Chomsky, who is still alive, very very old, but <laughs> still still among the living. Um, and yeah, he he argued or he believed that Israel was basically a tool of the United States. Um, it didn't make sense to me. Um, you know, I just didn't see the evidence for it. But what I, I, th I think like in his case, in the case of, of many other people who have advocated this is they're, they're, they're thinking theoretically rather than empirically. Because theoretically, you know, if you just kind of came at this, you had no prior knowledge of the world and you looked at a map and you saw, you know, the, the U.S. and you knew it was the largest um, military power in the world. And it's also the, you know, the largest economy in the world, you know, though that's now a little bit doubtful. I, I think you can argue China is. But but anyway, it's, you know, a very, very large economy. So very wealthy, very military, militarily very powerful. And you see this little country there, clearly, you know, it must be that the U.S. is using this as kind of a bridgehead in, in the Middle East. That would be, you know, just a, a rational assumption. Um, and, you know, interesting, like uh, John Mearsheimer, uh, he, he, you know, he's an advocate of realism. You know, he has a theory of realism to explain the behavior of uh, of of states, you know, on the, the world stage and how they how they relate to each other over security matters. And he says, quite frankly, you know, he's quite he's quite honest about this. He acknowledges that, you know, according to his theory, um, Noam Chomsky and Gilbert Doctorow should be right, you know, theoretically. But, you know, that's just not what's happening. And he doesn't have an explanation for it, but that's clearly not what's happening. You know, of course, he's done very careful studies of the relationship between Israel and the U.S. His, his book uh, that, you know, he published together with um, um, Stephen Walt back in the the early 2000s. I remember when it came out, the Israel lobby is, you know, points to just that. It's the power of the Israel lobby to shape American policy vis-a-vis -vis the Middle East. Um, so the, the thing is, yeah, you can understand why theoretically, you know, you would want to uh, make that assumption, but you have to look at the reality. And right. the thing is, so let's just start thinking just, you know, you have to see how how these two states actually relate, you know, through various, you know, institutions and incidents. And and every time you look at it, you see Israel shaping U.S. policy. And you and I'm sorry, but I haven't seen anything to show the reverse. I mean, we can talk about, um, uh, you know, recently we had Thomas Massey talking about how everybody, every last member of Congress is assigned a babysitter, basically. This is, you know, a representative from APAC or similar organization that minds, you know, lets people know, lets members of Congress know how they're supposed to vote. And they get calls and, um, you know, um, there, there are all kinds of, that's, you know, the, that's just one one example, you know, but examples of how this can work out, it can be very dramatic. Uh, Chas Freeman um, said that, he, like, he was present at some sort of hearing, you know, where there was, the, again, the, the talk of Israel came up, and there was a senator from, or um, a congressman from New York, 
Um, and he began to say something that he wasn't supposed to say about Israel. And then his minder came in and whispered in his ear, and then he, he just dropped it. You know, this is, I mean, it just happened. And, and there are countless stories like this. Or then, you know, just think about the recent trip of um, that uh, Netanyahu made, you know, to uh, the U.S. Congress. You know, these are, this is the U.S. Congress, you know, just uh, um, adoring him. He had to tell him to shut up and let him speak because they kept on applauding him. Now, if we have anything similar, I mean, can you talk about, I, you know, I'm waiting for the story of, of the, uh, uh, you know, the minders in the Knesset. You know, are there Americans who are telling the, you know, uh, um, Knesset members how to vote? You know, does an American president go there and get, you know, 40, you know, what was it, 58 standing ovations? Uh, and then, and then let's look at the incident that be, I think, in a way, is really the watershed incident that really began it all, that set us on this very unhealthy course, um, and that is the USS Liberty, you know, incident. It was Israel that you know attacked our the U.S. ship and killed thirty four um, uh, crew members. Thirty seven. Thirty four. Thirty seven. Yeah, I've, I, I, I'm not sure, but it's it's. it's one or the other, and then approximately 170 were injured. Um, very nearly sank the ship. It was it was only because of very really brave, um, extraordinary courage on part of some of the crew members that the ship was saved. You know, every effort was made to sink it, and then, okay, but then it was afterwards they were told not to say anything about it. You know, is this a is this a country that is just a, simply a vassal of the U.S.? You know, that we just tell them what to do. Again, it's just the evidence is just when you look at specific incidents of, you know, any kind of, um, <laughs> it, 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 you know, where actual contact between um, the, you know, Israelis and the U.S., um, you always find it going the other way. I mean, it, now, so, you know, I have some sympathy, at least for somebody initially who has that idea. You know, we ourselves will say that this is crazy. How is this? Happens. This has never right. happened in the history mm -hmm. of the world because it is a crazy thing. So some people just say, "Well, it just can't be." But yeah, that's not how I am going. half the time. Yeah, I keep, right. you tell me something like, "How is that possible? This is insane." How is it? Yeah. But 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 it's it's just true. It's just what happens in and out, and you can see it every. You know, it. it you don't have to dig very far to find the evidence of it. It's just. You know, pick up, read the Israel Lobby, or there are a number of other you know very good books, and and the the, the examples are countless. Mm -hmm. You have APAC just basically bragging that they own the U.S. Congress. They've bragged about it more than once on many occasions. It's is it, yeah. Is there an American organization that brags about opening, you know, owning?